been like a really hot topic lately of, you know, what what's really causing the inflation? Is it coming from, is it all just supply side stuff where this is like COVID related, you know, supply chains that are still broken or is it, uh, is it all demand? And, you know, obviously it's, you know, the answer is always like a little bit of both, but I personally like, I mean, it's impossible to break this stuff down and like actually understand exactly, you know, well, how much of, you know, like the used car market is due to just demand or just supply. And it's impossible to really like quantify that, but you can at least break down like the categories that we know in the CPI, for instance, that are mostly COVID related. And when you strip all this stuff out and you look at the, really the categories that are, are not highly COVID related, the CPI is still really high, even on those levels. So, you know, even when you, you people joke about how like, you know, backing out oil and, you know, things like that, that are essential items in the, in the CPI, but are very volatile. And, you know, this BLS makes a logical argument for stripping these out just to make the data, you know, not as, as variable over time so they can better interpret it. But when you go X, housing and x oil and x cars and you know all of the stuff that we basically use the the cpi is still high so to me i think that the the demand issue has been much more dominant over the course of the last especially the course of the last year um like i was i've said this publicly a bunch of times i was a big proponent of the stimulus packages in real time. And in retrospect, I think that at a minimum, the last one was a mistake. And I think it's easy now, you know, in real time, I think you could, you know, you could make arguments, logical arguments for it. A lot of people like Larry Summers and uh, Joe Manchin, they were arguing in real time, for instance, the third stimulus was way too much. Um, and that, I think that was around like the Delta wave, like when things were starting to look really bad again in, um, in like the middle of, of 2021. Um, but I think in retrospect, like, I think there's a good, there's a really reasonable argument that we did way too much. Well, yeah. did we do way too much or was it just way too general, right? And now we're sort of getting into some of the dimensions of the um, MNT versus post-Keynesian versus neo-Keynesian. And I do think it's, it's, it's useful to point out that much of this stimulus came out uh, under governments that, you know, un in no way, shape or form uh, were operating under the principles of MMT, right? Like um, yeah. MMT is, is, is coming to people's attention now. We're, 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 we're in, firmly in the Overton window. But when these stimulus measures were enacted 18 months ago, uh, 15 months ago, 12 months ago, et cetera, no one was, was enacting them based on principles guided by MMT, right? They were guided by much more traditional yeah. monetarist or post-Keynesian type frameworks, right? Um, and those frameworks were guided primarily by blunt tools, right? Um, you want to lower the cost of money, um, supply side economics. And, and I think that supply side economics and monetarism have a lot more to answer for in the context of what we're currently observing than MMT, right? And I think um, those who are firmly um, against MMT as a framework are using the current inflation as a, a stick to beat MMT with, but I think that that's a misguided um, cause effect relationship. Like they're, they're, that's being misconstrued. Yeah. Is that a fair? Well, here, question? you know, one of the big things is um, it really, I mean, it's called MMT, modern monetary theory, because it is really theoretical at this point, because they have a very, very specific set of policies that they would implement if, if an MMT economist was in the White House advising or advising all of Congress on what to do. The government would be run very, very differently than it is right now. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of people, they tend to read MMT and they basically just think, oh, 
this is just government spending writ large. And that's not really what it is at all. And I mean, it asks, you don't even necessarily have to have a lot of government spending under MMT. You probably would because most of the MMT economists tend to be, you know, kind of like Stephanie Kelton worked for Bernie Sanders. I mean, like you'd end up right. with a lot of government <laughs> spending. Um, but it's not like some essential component of the theoretical framework. And so the big thing about MMT um, you know, or, you know, backing up just a second, you cannot say that MMT is really right or wrong because it's really never been implemented anywhere. I mean, in the, the big deficits of the last few years, I mean, maybe they discredit, you know, big government Keynesian style counter cyclical policy to some degree, but they don't discredit MMT necessarily. Um, like I've written recently that, some of the stuff that MMT economists have been saying in the last like six months is kind of worrisome. Like Kelton's been saying basically spend more, more, more all the way up. And, you know, at least for someone like me who was like, whoa, whoa, like we should have actually pumped the brakes, you know, back when Larry Summers was saying um, you know, that sort of stuff scares me because it it seems like maybe there's signs there that the theory of inflation that they use, which has essentially been spend more to fix supply chains. Um, I don't know. I'm really skeptical of so stuff like that.